Fifteen twenty three and twenty five eleven. Uh, read we well we haven't prayed so I'll pray to ask for the Lord's enlightenment. That we are grateful for your presence with us as Jesus has revealed where two or three even gather He is with us. We accept the ministration of Holy Spirit. Your your divine equal who is sent to be our companion. Uh, may he teach us that which you would like us to discover from this word, and may we allow him to apply the principles to our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 23. It says, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? And then we go to chapter 25, verse uh, 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Very powerful verses there. Showing the value and the excellence of proper words, words spoken uh, with dignity and spiritual essence. Thanks, the person under B. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning, my prayer mountain siblings. Uh, we accept the prayer for the leading of the for God to lead us as we expound his word. So we're at Proverbs um, 15, verse 23. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Um, there is joy that comes from the words that we speak. And so we have to be very careful that our words bring about some level of joy, peace, and comfort. And um, a word spoken in due season, how good is it? I, I'm sure that we have had many utterances that we wish we could take back, but we can't take them back. And so the word spoken in due season, if it is not a good word, it is going to, it, it, it lingers, it lives with you, you wish you could take it back. And, you know, my mom would always say, make sure you you're, you consult your brain before you open your mouth. Because if you don't, those words, you really can't take them back. They resonate with us forever. Um, then Proverbs 25, verse 11, one of my favorite um, words in Proverbs, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. And what does this fitly here mean? Um, is it, it's not just the right word because it can be the right word said at the wrong time. And so this fitly here means it is when it is said, why it is said, to whom it is said, where it is said, how it is said, and what is said. So sometimes some persons say it is the truth. And so you just you just say it because it is the truth. But how is the truth said? When is it said? Why? Where? And to whom? It is uh, all of those make the word fitly. It is perfectly said. It is said the right time, the right place. And so God expects us to do that. And as we, we springboard into what was done yesterday morning about how we speak, what we say to each other. Brethren, some persons are living with wounds of words that were said to them as children. They have to, they carry those things with them forever. You know, you, you get a strapping or flogging from your parent and that goes, but a word that is said resonates with the child even unto the grave. So we have to be so careful what we say words are powerful and i want to say to us that words come about from a thought so watch your thoughts they become your words 
what your words they become your actions what your actions they become habits and what your habits they become your character what your character because they become your destiny and all that started all the way from your words may god help us to have our words seasoned and if they don't taste good to us then they will not taste good to others thank you thank you so much the you are seen <laughs> sister diana you are seen <laughs> under the name b uh, we are happy again to be um at in keep it real okay and now we ask our sister to remember sister sunshine in her prayer go ahead Sister Benjamin? The devil just cut me off, you know. Okay, let us bow our heads, please. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hills? Father God, we come before you this preparation day, asking you to forgive us for our sins throughout this past week, dear God. Putting our heart in your hands and getting us ready to go through this Sabbath day. In this country, Lord, is a festival that will humbug many that is in the city at this time, dear God. Close their ears to the for this 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 thing that will be taking place in the city, dear God. Be with us, your children, all around the world at this point in time. Many of us are in uncomfortable areas in this part of the world. Many of us are sick and afflicted in prisons and byways, wherever they be in the cold, wintry places, dear God, of this world. Be with your children, dear God, as you always. Some of us praying only in our dead mind, and some of us, dear God, praying but don't understand the prayers we even sending up. But the more we pray for others, dear God, you will bless us. Lord, let us die to serve daily and put others before us and see in our eye mind what is taking place with our brothers and sisters in this time of trouble. Father God, forget not the needy. You say, well, forget not the needy. Or you say, Lord, for the needy is always, will always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever, dear God. Lord, we thank you for this prayer line, dear God. We thank you for brotherly love. We thank you for concern, family and siblings and friends and the Christians that pray for us, dear God, one for another. We will tell all of us on this prayer team, dear God, you know our needs, you know what we're going through. We will sister sunshine and her eyes, dear God, and many others like her, even myself, brother, Obi, all of us who you know not see naturally, Lord. But with you, you are the God of our eyesight, our footstep, what our hands touch, what our mouth speak. Let us love you with all our hearts, dear God, and reach not to on our own understanding. But let us put our life daily in your hands. See us through this day, Lord, and hope to see tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Sister Benjamin. Thank you, Brother Abir, for the scripture reading. Sister Diana, for the exposition. Of course, the featured moment that we are all waiting for. We know Sister um, Denise Taxa is not online. And yesterday we, we had a robust discussion. It was very interesting. We were looking in the chat and the comments were the feedbacks. It was very good. So this morning, again, we seek to have that. We seek for your participation. We seek for your involvement, involvement in talking and responding. Right? I'm going to ask Sister Diana to monitor the chat this morning. And she's privileged to come in at any time. We're asking Brother Lambert to be very much involved. We're asking Sister Kian. Also, we are asking Brother Abir to put in your input also. 
right? We go to the acknowledgement of the hands just the same. We ask for the little children online, the youth to be involved. Kay Simit, we want to hear from you this morning. Right? So let's go. I will just promise. Brother Kooch, your brother Sean and your brother Marvin. Your, your brother Sean and your brother uh, Ella McIntyre. We have heard from Ella McIntyre. I would love to hear from him this morning. Right. Right. And those and those who um teach social races, the teachers, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from the, the, the those who have understand of the mind. Is this thing natural to be courteous, to be kind? It is it is it does it come naturally? We want to know. Or it must be developed. So we I'm have the truth. Well, the truth. Yeah. Also, also, we want the practical aspect of it, not the theoretical. How do we? Right, that's why you are here, brother. <laughs> so, punching the practical, right? We can bring in all of scriptures and let it go. So, brother Lambert, let's go. First and finals. Let's go. Let's hear from you. Yes. It says, grace is that bright and family life. And um, it, uh, courtesy begins at home. It's the first school. Home is the first school. And it is, it is a part of the, it is in the curriculum. It will banish half of life's ill. First thing I try to inculcate in my little granddaughter here is to say the word please and thank you. I'm sorry. And from she starts speaking, I could hear those. So currently at age four, you hear the words, thank you, grandpa. I'm sorry, Grandma. Please, Mommy. And it's starting those basic ways at home. Hence, when we go out, we do not have to be ashamed because we would have begun to teach those graces. I pause a moment. I'll come back. Because we would like so as many persons to participate. So it would be good if you could limit our our input. I pause for others to come in. There are hands. Um, Sister Diana, you want to call the hands from please in that order? Okay, I saw Keon, Brother Obeer, myself, and then Sister Sunshine. That's the order I saw them. So we'll take Sister Keon. Brother Beer. Yes, good morning. Um, when you read the Bible text this morning in um, Proverbs 25, verse 11, I was like, that is one of my favorite Bible texts. Um, um, however, in also Romans 8, that talks about now, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who walk after the flesh. So there's no punishment or there's no announcement of the person being guilty to those who walk after the spirit. Um, so my question is, um, it linked to what Brother Lambert just, just spoke about, I think, two days ago, um, when he was mentioning to cut off those who are against you, um, the fact that the Bible says that there's no condemnation. So should Christian, and this is something that I've heard quite a few times, so should Christian have uh, a view of loving from a distance? So that's my question. Um, should Christian have that view of loving from a distance? Thank you. Thank you so much, my sister. Um, 
brother, I see a mic open, brother. Oh, brother, if we take that question, we probably will detour for more topic. Um, or you probably want to just respond and we can revisit it. That's a very interesting um point of interjection, and it could take us into the, the entire morning. So yes, I just a, have just a brief response, sister Diana. Remember, good communication corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupt good manners. That's a saying. It also says, show you my friends and I tell you who you are. We are admonished to love everybody, even our enemies. But I believe firmly that some people, you have to love them at a distance because if they come too close to you, the impact will be tremendous, the negative. So yes, some people, you have to love them at a distance. Even some family members. All right. Um, I I am sure we will revisit that topic, um, Brother Ubeer. Uh, thank you. I want to to cite the first paragraph under this uh, chapter here, sixty nine. I found it to be very meaningful. I read, this caption is, courtesy will banish life's ills. And remember, the Lord never exaggerates. What, he, what is said there is factual, it's factual. I'm reading, the principle inculcated by the injunction, quotation, be kindly affectioned one to another, close quotation, lies at the very foundation of domestic happiness. And domestic means home, happiness in the home. Uh, inculcated means that which is involved in that particular thing being considered. Be kindly affectioned one to another. Christian courtesy should reign in every household. It is cheap, or that is, it doesn't cost a lot, but it has power to soften natures which would grow hard and rough without it. The cultivation of a uniform courtesy, a willingness to do by others as we would like them to do by us, would banish half the ills of life. And I just, I want us to understand what the Lord is saying. Just these simple things, just to do as Jesus said, as ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. This is the law and the prophets. I think he was saying that all the whole scripture is summarized in that phrase. If we would treat others the way we would like to be treated, half of the ills, the difficulties, the pains, the sorrows of life would be banished just by putting this principle into practice. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Obeer. I think it's my turn. Then we go to Sister Sunshine and then Sister Jean. I particularly like that Brother Brother Lambert said that we are to be practical, you know, rather than just giving the theory or the words that are here. So I have highlighted some words that I want to amplify really. And the question was asked if it is natural or it is something that is that you develop. And courtesy and kindness is not something that is natural because we have a fallen nature. So by virtue of that, it is not something that comes about naturally. We are mean-spirited naturally. And so it says the principle inculcated. What does it mean to inculcate? That is not something that is innate. That is something that is nurtured. It is developed and you trim it and you groom it. As you go along, you are monitoring something that is growing and developing. So it's like you have a, a plant and you water it. You pull out the weeds or like a garden. You pull out the weeds. You make sure, you know, you have no thorns or anything that comes to crowd out or drown out the good things that you have in your garden. So that's what it is to, to monitor, to make sure what is supposed to be in there is there. So you're inculcating that. Also, the word cultivate. 
cultivate does don't just happen at the snap of a finger. It is something that you plant and you you prepare the soil, you plant and you watch it grow. So it is also intentional, conscious intention that you're monitoring something and watch it to grow. And those are words that I underline. Another one is practice. It means that it is something you're doing over and over and over again. It becomes a habit. It, and after it becomes a habit, it forms a character. And after it forms a character, it becomes a part of the destiny, your destiny. So those words help you to understand that it is not something that happens at the snap of, of a finger. It's not something that you are born with. And then some practical things that are mentioned, it says... No rude language should be indulged. What does that mean? You don't speak mean to your children and derogatorily and you, your facial expression. And I would have heard of somebody saying to somebody, I want to say what I want to say. I'll just use it to look at you. Can you imagine how, 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 how coarse that probably what was going to be said could be? And then... It says no bitter words. You don't say bit, and we know what those are. I don't like you. You look like this. Nothing good will come of you. Why are you like this? You speak down to your children. Cheerful countenance and a gentle voice. And as a teacher, I was taught that I'm to model the desired behavior I want to see in my students. So I call my children prince and princess and so my daughter called me your highness. Those are the things, the words, you know, I love you. You are beautiful. Those things, she look at me the other day and she says, mom, you are just so gorgeous. So, you know, the words that you say, they come right back to you. So the next person we'll have is Sister Jean. Then we'll have Sister Sunshine, followed by Brother Truth. I have to say amen, your Sister Diana. I could go ahead now. Hello. Yes, you might, Jean. It's your turn. Yes, I just I wanted to say what Brother Overy had already said that you have to start from the home. And then have some people, yes, they don't register kindness or cutting assist to nobody. When we were growing up as children, we always. My mother always taught us some small that we must say good morning and hello and be polite to people like my brother Lambie said. But the parents of today, children are making children and like they don't really understand the yeah, way of bringing up children in the way that they're supposed to bring up children. And then she White give us good back in and she said we must share in the children from our womb. So when we read those religious books and things and we train our children from the womb and they born they will grow up to the man and woman the way they want it to be. That's all I want to say this morning. Thank you. You're welcome, Sister Sunshine. Yes, I am so guilty when it comes to that. And I'm telling you the truth. It was brought to my attention by Zion. I, you know, you, I said to him, can you, can you take this for mommy? And he, I realized that he, he was ignoring me. And then when I, I said it again, he said, mommy, you did not say please. And I was like, Oh, oh, sorry. You know, we have to, and, and the, the, the children do see, they do notice when we when we do things and how it's said because it, it, it was brought to my attention. And I'm like, mommy, you realize you, you, I'm not answering you because you did not say please. And then at Sabbath school, I told the children, um, no, I went to drop off Zion to school first. And I noticed when all the children pass in, the first person they meet at the gate is the security and everyone was just passing the securities. The children are just walking through. So I decided at Sabbath school to ask my Sabbath school children, do you know the name of your security that God that is at the school every day and on and the janitor? And not one of them in my class knew. So I gave them that as a homework. I said, when you go to school, Find out the name of your security. Find out the name of the janitor. They're important to you. They're important to the school. And when you meet them on the compound, 
say good morning. And, and it is something that we have to instill in the children when we work with them in Sabbath school. So at Sabbath school now we're teaching etiquette please and thank you, how to sit properly, how to stand, how to walk, how to bend down the girls, how to bend down to pick up something. And if we don't start it at school or at church, it is not taught in the home. Our children in society will not be what we, they're supposed to be. So we too have to do it in the school and in the church so our children can learn. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll take Brother Truth. Um, Dr. Lamley, Brother Sean, then we go back to Brother Obeer. Before you come, though, Brother Truth, I want to amplify a question that is in the chat um, so we can keep that in mind as we comment. How will Christian courtesy be evident, evident in our lives when we love from a distance? How should we cultivate godly principles to model God's grace? So we can look at that as we share our utterances, Brother Truth, Dr. Lamley, Brother Sean, then Brother Obey. Okay, I will give way to Dr. Lamley and Sean and come after that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, there is something very interesting that I saw in my devotional this morning. I was doing this day with God and in 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 us talking about the the doing of things, you had mentioned, Sister Diana, that it is not naturally a part of us to do that which is right. And in Isaiah one, it tells us that we are to uh, cease from doing evil and practice doing good because it's not natural. It is a Oh no, we are not hearing you, doctor, and we really want to hear that. Oh, she fell off. All right, uh, um, doctor. Sorry, right. yeah, but I'm, I'm having a terrible time with my internet these days. Are you hearing me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so uh, but as I read deeper in the word of God, there's something that I read this morning. I just read a, a, just a minute of it. He said. When level is introduced into meal, meal, it penetrates to every part till an entire change takes place. So it is with the work of the Holy Spirit upon the human heart. The truth received and believed introduces new rules, new principles of action into the life. A new standard of character is set up, and this is the life of Christ so so what is happening is that we want to do the good and we try to do the good but unless we allow the spirit of god sister diana to come and take over our heart we are going to be a mechanical so some days we are going to get it right and someday we will be wrong because it is only the spirit of god that can give us that consistency in doing the things of god so our daily duty our daily prayer is to ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit. And as the spirit of God takes over, it, be, it takes over the entire life. And all that we do will be mirrored after the things of God. So I pray this morning as we pray, always remember, ask the Lord to empty us of self and to fill us with his spirit so that we can do the things that are pleasing to God in our homes, in our society. We will mirror Christ in everything. Thank you. Great. Can you just put in the chat the the um the reading this morning for those persons who want to go and reread that? Brother Sean, Brother Obeer, then we come back to Brother Truth. A blessed morning again to everyone. You know, it's it's really a, a nice thing that we can discuss these um attributes of the spirit uh, of God. And um, for me, I experience courtesy and kindness almost on a daily basis, especially when my grandchildren are uh, come visiting or when we pick them up from school. Um, my wife 
when he picks them up, um, depending upon how my daughter and the son-in-law would work. And whenever I get home, they both come running to me, to greet me. And, you know, my granddaughter, she blurts out, you know, Grandpa, I, I love you. You know, and my grandson, you know, he's he's just a toddler, still, you know, learning his speech. And he mimics that. And, they, you know, they come, one wants to sit on one leg and one wants to sit on another leg. And I reflect upon how that act, that very act, that, that innocence softens me. You know, all the grudgery of the day just melts away and... Um, I am left with no response, but to be courteous and kind to them, even in my worst time. And it, it just says to me that, you know, just as the children are innocent and will show courtesy and kindness because they are unblemished as we adults are, if we are also as Christians to really allow for the Holy Spirit to work upon us on our stony hearts. We too can exhibit the, the love, the care, the affection to our um to our family members, even when we don't see eye to eye. And, and that's why I love when it was said that you know courtesy and kindness begins in the home. And finally, uh Sister White would have gone through you know, a lot of writings about these two attributes because of the importance of it. Many times we say how business people are courteous and kind, but they, they do it because they, they, they have foresight. When you go into a business place, they treat you a particular manner because they want to extract money from you. Not necessarily that they, 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 they like you per se, but their, their business is to make a profit to treat you as a customer and we too as christians we have to when we interact with people if we want to win them to god's kingdom be able to allow this courtesy and kindness that that is of the spirit to dwell within us so that when people see us they would be attracted to us despite what differences we may have and they may feel you know encouraged and open to receive us whenever we approach them. I pause there, thank you. I think I was told I'm next or I'm, I'm... Yes, go ahead. Thank you, dear. Uh, I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 22, verses 24 and 25. And the Lord says here through Solomon, uh, reinforcing what Lambert said, make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, you shall not go, lest you learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. That in this case, we don't be close to him. Love him at a distance. Because if you make him an intimate of your life, uh, an intimate associate, you may learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. That's an important principle to understand. God is not telling us to be, to be intimate with all different kinds of people. And I'm saying intimate in the social sense. Today, intimate is only used in the erotic sense, mostly. But it's there are some people, as Lambert said, that we should keep at a distance for our own welfare. Because God is saying, if you get close, don't go with him. Don't associate with him. Because you may, you may imitate his ways and get a snare to your soul. So that's a, I'm glad you mentioned that, Lambert. We seem to forget that some people, you love them only at a distance. Or else you're, you're endangering your own spiritual, moral, and social welfare. I just want to say a little more on some another topic. Today, there is such a dearth, a scarcity of simple politeness. On the telephone, many people will just say, hold on, you know, or someone wants to call someone, come here, especially people in official positions. 
But politeness suggests that we make requests, not commands. Would you hold up for a moment, please? Would you come here? Might I do such and such? Might I talk to you? Might I see you for a minute? Let me, let, let me talk to you. And this is virtually dead. When I think in my childhood, that was much more prevalent. People would make requests and not commands all the time. I saw that to be more in America than in the Caribbean. But today we seem to be worse in the Caribbean. We, we just give commands. Come here, hold on, stand up. We, we should, these little, the simple observations can make life so much more gracious and pleasant when we make requests rather than uh, issue commands. It would help a lot with the people with whom we associate. I thank you so much, my brother. So much can be said about that because we just, it is true. Do this. I don't want to see that. I want this. I, you know, let us be really courteous. Now, there are many hands and I'm going to take them in this order. Brother Linford, um, Sister Veronica and Sister Lisa. Then we come back to faith and then we come back to truth. So we're going to do a Linford, Veronica, Lisa, mm -hmm. Faith, and Truth. Might I remind you that you had said Desmond would be next because he's been postponed for a while. I don't know if you forgot. Um, could you say, Brother Truth, if you are okay with that? or I, I will defer. I want the voices to be heard. Okay? I will come at the end. Thank you, Brother Truth. Um, Good morning, so everyone. That order. Good morning, everyone. We just want to remind ourselves that courtesy speaks to the showing of politeness in one's attitude and behavior towards others. And, you know, we speak about um, seeing it in a practical way. And in that regard, I have noticed that um, previously my granddaughter, when she would come over in the morning, she, um, I just said, good morning, Catherine. She would not answer. <clears throat> She'll be looking at you, and you say it several times, and there is no response. And um, sometimes my wife will say, well, she just wait, so, you know, allow her. But we keep insisting each morning that she would come over, good morning, Catherine. And we notice now that in recent times, when she's coming over, she's running, and she's saying, good morning, Grandma, and good morning, Grandpa. And this has now been a practice of hers, um, I would say, since this year. And of course, we, we, you know, we feel very good about that, that she has now caught on to the, the practice of being courteous. And um, it was at my office yesterday when I went in. That there were two persons, there were about four persons there, and two were talking. And I said, good morning, everyone. And uh, only two responded. And my approach was, let me try that again. Good morning, everyone. And the two persons who were talking said, good morning, Mr. Mark. You know, and that has happened many times when you say good morning to everyone, that only some persons respond. And um, I would usually say, let me try that again. And when I say it the second time, then everyone else who did not respond earlier will respond. And it is so important that as individuals that we practice courtesy. Um, you know, when persons come in your space and they don't show the usual courtesy, you tend to um, look down on them and say, them not have no manners. And so it is always a good practice when we go into a place for the first time or when we are seeing others who are already there that we, you know, extend the usual courtesy to them to say good morning or good afternoon, as the case might be. And so it is very important that, you know, we do that and we practice that because um, it makes a world of difference. You know, people look at you differently when you extend um, courtesy, the usual courtesy, and you're polite and you're kind. People look at you in a, in a more positive light. And so... You know, I think it is a good practice. And sometimes it is not in us because of our sinful nature, but we need to ask the Lord to help us so that we can be more and more like him. Thank you so much.
Thank you. We are about um eight minutes to go. So I'm going to ask us to make our comments a little more succinctly. Thank you so much. I want to get everybody's thoughts. Thanks, Sister Veronica. Sister Lisa, yeah. go ahead. Yes. Um, When we learn about Christian courtesy and we practice it, sometimes those who don't know about courtesy will not so quickly um to be amicable towards it. And um, I speak of our experience, I won't go down deep into it, but as a young social worker at the time, when something was happening in my, in my community, or in the gap they call it in Barbados, and I used Christian courtesy and uh, approached the situation it was with a 13 year old boy, and the father refused to give heed to it, and eventually I have to bring the child to a child care board. And the night I went up to him and I used courtesy and I said, um, good evening, I'm sorry. I know, I know that you'll be offended and blah, 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 blah. And at the end of it, I told him that it was all about the boy's welfare. And he told me, get out my, get out my place. And he started quite very bad. And I felt real bad that he had reached a point. This is the point that, uh, but I'll, um, but Lamley and the others were talking about at a distance, staying at a distance. And I walk in up with the, to my house and I say, Father, how can I um, redeem this um, between us? And I went inside and I went down and I prayed. And after I prayed, I opened the Bible and it went straight to Proverbs 22 because I was thinking to go back down there and see if I can redeem uh, uh, something between me and the, 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 the Father. And the, the Bible tell me plainly, he said, to a few rest man, do not go. And um, at least you'll learn his ways. So, I mean, you will start a quarrel like he's quarreling. And then I realized the Lord telling me, stay, stay away, keep a distance. Say hi and why not good night, but keep your distance. So the word of God is there to, to, to direct us to where he wants us to really be. And if we only listen to him, we will not go wrong. Okay. I noticed that um Sister Lisa took her hand down. I'm gonna just ask Brother Faith, then Brother Truth quickly. Yes, it says love at a distance. Says Brother Abir and Sister Lamy. They inserted two very important words that we need to have. One consistency christ is consistent variableness are of us but consistency is in christ then you look at the other word intimate we interact with them we do we show kindness to them christ like courtesy with them but we do not become intimate with them and that's that is the point you do all the kindness to them but you don't have to get them into your place they interact in your space, but not in your place. In other words, I do what I have to do to them from a Christ-like manner, but I do not let their influence come into my, my, into my person. Thank you. For the truth quickly. Okay. Uh, my input is, of course, I like the direction that is still on the Sabbath. And that is what is important for us. The Bible said in Isaiah 11, speaking of Jesus, that the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And he shall make him a fit understand. And this is what he will do. He will not judge after the sight or his ear or his eyes, Sight of his eye, neither reproof of the hearing of his ears. In First Peter 2, he said, the Bible said something like this about Jesus, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to the Lord. And so for us, when we are, we found ourselves in this position with even those who do not display Christian courtesy, we retaliated, you are rude, and the voice and the expression drive a wedge between the soul and the savior. 
the purpose of all of this is to win humanity to Christ. So we want to be conscious of that. So need not we say use words like go ahead, tande de den. Those common expressions must not be used. What we are saying, what Sister Lamia has said is that when the spirit comes in, it will continually be. There, there will be no today and tomorrow. Are you like that person? Are you like that person? Sister White said this, there is a great need of the cultivation of true refinement in the home. There is a powerful witness in favor of truth in whomsoever they may appear. Vulgarity of language and of demeanor indicate a vitiated art. Truth of heavenly origin never degrades the receiver, never makes him coarse or rough. Truth is softening and refining in its influence. When receiving the art, it makes the youth respectful and polite. Christian politeness is received only under the working of the Holy Spirit. It does not consist in affectation or artificial polish, in bowing and simpering. This is the class of politeness possessed by those of the world, but they are destitute of true Christian politeness. True polish, true politeness is obtained only from a practical knowledge of the gospel of Christ. True politeness, true courtesy, is a kindness shown to all, high or low, rich or poor. Thank you so much, my brother. Um, again, we look at words fitly, fitly spoken. I just want to close off with something I read some time ago. Um, I want to share something I read. Are you hearing me? Loud and clear, Sister Diana. Okay. Um, something I read some, some time ago uh, comes to us from Help in Daily Living, um, chapter one. Um, let me just, it says that um, there is no standard of living that we have that can show a true Christian than that of a loving, lovable Christian. So there is nothing else that can show that we are a Christian than, than us being courteous and kind. And it is not a, a outward emblem that you wear or a cross. And anybody who have the book, Helping Daily Living, that first chapter is something that we should read. It, it ties in nicely on what a loving, lovable Christian should be, one who does not retaliate. So if you go someplace and, and somebody's mean to you or you say good morning and they don't answer, you're going to say, when I say good morning and they didn't answer, you are the Christian, you are the leaven, you are the salt, and you need a flavor everywhere you go. You know, one of my sister from Seven for Heaven, Camille, she always says that if you have an encounter with somebody, and when you walk away, you cannot go back and represent Christ to that person, then you'd have damaged the soul. So let us be mindful of what we do and be courteous in all things. Loving Father, we thank you for this sitting this morning. We thank you for tabernacling with us and leading us into this discussion. May we not just do them by words or utterances, but may we allow them to transform our lives um, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, as was mentioned this morning, the Holy Spirit dwelling us so that day by day we'll be transformed more into the image of God. Thank you for hearing our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus.